Um, this is the first video of a series of three which I'm doing. Um, this is a CNC machine. Um, I built this machine myself oh, a few years ago now and um, use it mainly for a, you know, a machine of acrylics, um, timbers and sort of various things. And um, the machine is all made from aluminium um, box section, uh, heavy, heavy gauge. And um, the spindle is a Crest spindle from Germany, which is a heavy duty um, spindle mainly made for this type of work. It's got a very good sideways load. Um, the bearings are very, you know, they're very tough bearings. And um, that's, you know, that's just been brilliant and um, a lot better than the normal ones what people put on. You know, they've, a lot of people just use normal timber routers. Um, but I've found that this, this works well in, in this environment. Um, the machine is boxed in to keep all the dust and such in and um, these work well with those, you know, being in those environments. And um, the machine um, has got hardened uh, ways, you know, for the, um, the, the router to run on. Um, it's on board screws, so you've got very little, um, you know, you, you, your tolerance is very good and um, repeatability, you know, so if you move off to somewhere and come back, it comes back to the same spot and um, it's been you know it's a very accurate machine um, it's not a hundred percent accurate you know like a, a proper um, like a Miller machine because I just don't need that accuracy um, you know but it, it's down to 0 0.002 you know something like that it's real close accuracy so um, all the all the bits and pieces um, like the ball screws and the, the linear bearings and all that they, they all came from uh, China as they do nowadays um, and I've found those to be, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. The run out on the, on the bearings is very good, you know, it's virtually spot on. Um, they've been very, very good quality. I've got to know a guy in China pretty well, and um, he's always provided me with good stuff in there. And same with the ball screws, um, you know, they're, they're top notch ball screws. I don't have no issues with those. Um, so I say I've got it in this box to keep all the rubbish in, and it also keeps the noise down to a certain degree. Um, when the spindle's running, if I run it flat out, it's probably you know 100, uh, about 25,000 RPM. So you know it, it does get quite noisy and with the cutter cutting into timber and such. It can be quite noisy, but the box you know does sort of dampen that noise pretty well. Um, the bed um, is um, a reasonable size, and then we've got a 12. This is a 1200 by 600 prop, um, spoil board. Um, when I say spoil board, it means that if the cutter goes through, you can probably see on here all these marks. If the cutter goes through the material, it's not going to do any damage to the bottom bed. It just does damage to this spoil board, and this spoil board gets replaced probably once every six months or whatever when that, when it's been chewed up pretty well. Um, so yeah, so that, that's that's an excellent idea. You know, if anybody's building a router, don't just do it on the main board. Always have a spoil board. Um, the spoil board also takes out when the machine is built um, there's obviously variances between the tip of the router and the board so like it might hit here um, when you bring it down to the top but over somewhere else it might not hit so the spoil board um, is surfaced with a with an each cutter um, so you set it to run you know like cut half a mil off at this point or something and it goes across the entire board so then the board ends up being exactly level to the tip you know, your tip of your cutter. Um, speeds, uh, I cut at all different speeds, feed rates and RPMs and whatever. It depends on what I'm machining. Plastics, um, depends on cutter, but I don't tend to go too fast through plastics um, with a reasonably low RPM. Otherwise, if you go too fast, the cutter just chews its way through and you end up melting the plastic around the cutter and it just, uh, it's just a mess. Um, with timbers, obviously you work faster with timbers, and you cut. You, you know your RPMs are faster on the spindle as well, um, because uh, the timber you can you can cut a lot quicker with timber. Um, but with the machine, the electronics are up here. Um, the electronics again are from China, and um, just a general board. Um, I've not had no problems with that at all. That's been faultless. Um, the information you know gets through to from the computer to that, you know, is, is every time it's just repeatability, you know, there's no problems or no issues. Uh, software I use for um, on the computer is Mac 3, 
and um, which is probably the most common software which people use in um, you know on these types of machines. Um, there is more expensive software, but Mac 3, you know, you have to buy a license, which isn't very expensive, not at all really, probably uh, around about 150 bucks New Zealand. Um, and then there's other software. Um, you've obviously got your drawing software, where I use an old version of AutoCAD and um, produce all my drawings in DXF format. Um, I then use another piece of software to um, then get my tools, my my um, my toolings, you know, from the for the movements and that. And uh, there's there's different types. There's freeware. There's uh, open source. You know, I mean, CanBam is um, one to what springs to mind, but I use a, another piece of software for that. So, and then um, we've got a touch plate on here as well. So, when I get the machine to um, zero out, um, if I'm cutting on plastic, and I've told that if I'm using 4.5 mil plastic, I'll cut at 5 mil just to go through the surface. So, I need to know the depth of that. So, I use a touch plate, um, just an easy touch plate. So. What happens is uh, I'll, I'll put this onto here and then um, press the button on the thing and the, the machine will just lower itself um, quite slow until it touches the plate and then lifts off. It then knows that the you know what I'm cutting and uh, the thickness of it. Um, I've programmed I've programmed a, 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 just a game pad and uh, this is just what you play games with you know. And um, this is all programmed to um, get this to all move around so I can do the manual settings as well. So I'll just give you a demo of that. So I've got a reasonably slow speed. But I mean, just in and out, uh, up and down. And then on here as well is my touch plate button and uh, sort of a couple of other buttons and that. Um, when I built the machine, and um, I've got no limit switches on the machine, um, I don't need low limit switches, and you know it depends on what you're going to be using the machine for. Um, all my limits, all my limits are set in the software. So if I try and go too far one way and it hits the limit in the software, that will just stop the machine. So um, I never zero zero the machine because I don't need to. Um, Whenever I start my work or whatever, where I'm cutting, I just bring the machine to where I need it and I manually zero it in the software. And, um, and that, that works fine. The same with on the Z plane, um, there's no limit switches on that. Again, that's all controlled by the software. And um, if I go too high, the software will just stop the machine and you just have to reset it and that. Um, and that's pretty much it at this stage. The, the clamps all move up and down in these um, grooves and that, so I can work with different size materials, different size timbers and such. Um, these are all made from nylon. Um, as you can see, they've got a few battle scars. Um, I found that a real good idea rather than using metal ones. Um, if I get too close to one of these, it will just chew the front off or just cut through it. And I don't break the cutter, which aren't cheap. And also, I don't damage the CNC in any way. So, um, um, what else can I say, really? Uh, that's about it, really. Um, other than, um, here's a typical example of what I cut. Um, there's a lady who just wanted some hearts just cut out of um, clear perspex. Um, so, she gave me the sizes. I then drew those in CAD and obviously converted them to what that needed um, for her to cut. And then on this end is just a cake stand um, for another lady. Um, so yeah, so but when when you're cutting stuff, um, so on this cake stand here we've got a circle obviously. And um, when you set it up to cut, there's little tabs on here. So what will happen is when the machine goes round and does its cut, it will go so far, lift off the, off the surface by a, I've got it set to 1.5 mil. Then it will plunge again and do its cut to the next one, lift off, and then so and so. So then, what happens is that when that when it finishes its cut, the, the piece is still held in there, and um, by these little tabs, and that stops um, the machine from when it, when if you try to do that in one continuous cut, when you got when you get round to where it started from, 
once it finishes the cut, the, the, the bit will vibrate and you'll mess the edge up or, or that will jump out of the machine. You risk breaking a cutter. So these little tabs, just hold it in place. And then once you've finished, you just take it out, just chisel through those little tabs or with a pair of cutters or something like that, and then just finish those up on the finished piece. Um, the cutters I use, the, the feed rates I use, and the RPM of the cutter leaves a very good edge on the, um, on the acrylic. Um, which has been a bit of a trial and error, especially with cutters, because there, there's so many variations of cutters, and you can easily spend a lot of money on cutters, and you don't need to just shop around. Um, I, some cutters I've got come from China, some come from the UK, um, you know, and I've managed to source good quality cutters and that at a reasonable price. Whereas, um, you know, you can pay a hundred dollars uh, New Zealand for a cutter, and you can pay 60 bucks, you know, um, from one from China. It does exactly the same job. Um, high speed steel on, on these. Um, on some of the stuff, it depends what I'm cutting, but I do use uh, TCTs, but mostly just high speed steel, and they last a long time, especially just cutting acrylics and that sort of thing. As long as you don't get the tip too hot, you know, that they do last. And same with timbers and that, you know, the cutters last a long time. Um, I do cut some aluminium on here, um, but I don't tend to, you know, the machine wasn't really designed for that purpose, but, you know, I have had people where they've asked me to cut things out in aluminium and that, and that the machine copes with that no problem, and um, obviously you have to use proper cutters for that sort of thing, but, you know, I've got some old cutters, um, oh, actually come over from the UK, which I use on that, and, you know, I'm still using those cutters. Um, provided you know you do the right thing, either use a bit of oil or a bit of W to D40 or something like that. The cutters last you know a reasonable time. So, and um, that's pretty much it. So, thanks.